evening. There are two different conversations going on in this country right about now. One of them in Washington, the other in the rest of the country. Both of them have to do with an extremely violent civil war a long way away from us in Syria. President Obama says he's convinced the government there used chemical weapons against its own people and that the U.S. must attack, and he's asked Congress to go along with him. So in Washington, the conversation went like this today. Secretary of State John Kerry made the case to a House committee, and while he spoke, protesters made the indelible point silently sitting behind him that the U.S. would then have blood on its hands. Across the rest of the country, Americans who are tired of two wars over the past decade or more are wondering if even a limited attack is worth the cost and the potential risk. It is where we begin tonight with NBC's Kelly O'Donnell in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Kelly, good evening. Good evening, Brian. The message we're hearing is loud and it's lopsided against the use of military force. The Americans who want to be heard at meetings here and around the country are even more opposed than those questioned more broadly in public opinion polls. It does reflect a concern about the country getting involved in another conflict. You don't know, for example, crammed into tight no, spaces. What difference are we going to make? And crowded together. I want you to vote no on Syria. All we're going to do again is create another problem. So we need to stop. Out today to see their congressman and say their piece on Syria. Do you think the U.S. should take action? No, I don't. That no was repeated again and again. Each time Congressman Justin Amash asked for a show of hands at nearly a dozen stops over two days. How many are opposed to military strikes? In this Republican district near Grand Rapids, Michigan, Amash has been holding these sessions exclusively about Syria, the country where his own mother was born. Amash, a Republican, does not support a military strike, saying U.S. national security is not at stake. Do you think leadership in Washington will listen to what you've been hearing here? I think so. Uh, if they go against uh, the will of the American people to this extent, there will be serious repercussions. From packed town hall meetings in Connecticut to Oklahoma this week, Americans have vented their frustrations and fears. West Virginians fired up the phone lines into Washington. Thank you for calling Senator Joe Manchin's office. Staffers keeping track of what the public has to say. I let the senator know that you're opposed to intervening in Syria. And Back here in Michigan. To clean up everybody's mess. War weariness is evident. When you hear the administration say this would be very limited, do you believe that? No, I do not. He has no idea that that's the case. Mm -hmm. There's no, this is a complete unknown. Clearly outnumbered at meetings today, Pastor Tim Cooper says he thinks the U.S. must do something. I can't imagine our commander in chief asking to do this if it weren't going to be effective. The Congress has just a couple of dozen of the hundreds of people he has met do support this. I checked back with Senator Manchin's office. They say they've received about 2,000 emails and phone calls overwhelmingly opposed. And Brian, the people we met said they have a lot of compassion for the suffering in Syria, but so many doubts about what the U.S. can and should do. Brian? Kelly O'Donnell starting us off from Grand Rapids, Michigan tonight. Kelly, thanks. And again, while critics tend to be more vocal than supporters in this, and we just saw some of that, all of this is adding pressure on the president to take his case directly to the American people, even as he takes the case to the world stage. Tonight, he's in Sweden, where he said today it wasn't just him drawing this so-called red line on chemical weapons. Our chief White House correspondent, Chuck Todd, traveling with the president tonight. Chuck, good evening. Good evening, Brian. Well, the pressure on the president to speak publicly in some sort of official form, primetime address, Oval Office style address to the nation. It, the pressure's coming from Democrats, from Republicans, from leadership on the Hill, from outside supporters of the president. All of them saying, if you want Congress to do this, you've seen the polls, Mr. President, you're going to have to make this case yourself. If anything, if simply to give political cover to a bunch of House Democrats, a lot of whom got elected on being anti-war, anti-Iraq, and if they're going to do this for the president, they want the cover from him explaining it to the American people. And one of those explanations has to do, of course, with this red line. And today, here in Sweden, the president redefined what he meant by his red line. Take a listen. I didn't set a red line. The world set a red line. The world set a red line when governments representing 98% of the world's population said, 
uh, the use of chemical weapons are abhorrent and passed a treaty forbidding their use even when countries are engaged in war. Congress set a red line when it ratified that treaty. The president is making the case that this is everybody's problem on Capitol Hill, everybody's problem in the world community. And Brian, tomorrow the president leaves for Russia where he's going to come face to face, if only briefly, with the one man that has stood in the way of international cooperation on this, Vladimir Putin. All right, Chuck Todd with the president tonight in Stockholm. Chuck, thanks. Now back to what we said at the top of the broadcast about Washington and the conversation going on there. The huge lobbying effort by the Obama team to get a yes vote on this military strike. Our chief foreign affairs correspondent, Andrea Mitchell, covering from our D.C. newsroom tonight. Andrea, good evening. Good evening, Brian. The president's proposed airstrikes did get past the first hurdle in a key Senate committee today. But the president is still facing a fierce debate in the House as Tea Party Republicans and liberal Democrats join forces against the White House. The war continued today with the government battering rebel forces near Damascus as Congress fought political wars in both houses. A sharply divided Senate Foreign Relations Committee voted to support the president, 10 to 7, but added time limits, 90 days for military action, and to satisfy John McCain, the White House has to deliver a strategy for Syria within 30 days. The House was even tougher, as members asked the questions voters are asking. Why should Syria matter to them? Why is it always America out front? I know we've got the best military, and I'm very proud of that. But why are we out leading this again? You ever been to the cemetery in France, at, uh, you know, above those beaches? Why'd those guys have to go do that? Because we were standing up with people for a set of values and fighting for freedom. Not a one member in my district in South Carolina or the emails of people that have contacted my office say, go to Syria and fight this regime. To a letter, they say no. I am not going to sit here and be told by you that I don't have a sense of what the judgment is with respect to this. Members have doubts about the rebels. Who are the good guys uh, over there in Syria? You're uh, referring to the opposition. I assume. But do you They're, implicitly trust these people? Well, that's not my business to trust uh, Well, certainly anybody, it, has to, be, it has to be the business because you're making decisions to go into war and put American lives at risk. And they have doubts saying they were lied to about Iraq. I want to make sure that you promise us that you're telling the truth. Congressman, I am proud and perfectly willing to tell you that everything that I've said uh, is the truth. Most members don't want to go it alone. Today, Russia's President Putin dangled the idea of supporting a U.N. vote for military action, but still does not believe the U.S. evidence of a chemical attack by the regime. Today, Defense Secretary Hagel told Congress that the airstrikes could cost tens of millions of dollars, but Secretary Kerry then said that Arab leaders have offered to pay the full cost. Brian? Andrea Mitchell rounding out our coverage in D.C. tonight.